morning. We're going to hopefully go to the Limerick Team Hotel in just a while to hear from people involved in that great win yesterday. We'll hear from Tommy Welch as well before the morning is out. But right now we're joined by uh, Tipperary's le- Tipperary legend, Paddy Maher. Paddy, how are you getting on? Good, lads, yourselves? Yeah, very well. Um, first of all, we were chatting earlier on about Kilkenny and how much more they could have done yesterday to stop that Limerick onslaught. Was there more they could have done to, to try and get a bit closer? Um, yeah, I suppose they probably weren't uh, overly happy on the first half performance, you could say. Um, you know, there's a few of us there together watching the game yesterday up there and we were just saying at half time that they would have been very happy going in with just being four pints down, you know. Um, you know, could have got away from very easy in the first half there. They could have easily been seven, eight pints down, you know. So, um, yeah, look, looking back over the game as a whole, um, in the grand scheme of things, you should probably say, and if they got a bit of a handle more in, their, in the Limerick half forward line, they might have made it a bit easier for themselves. But um, but look, you know, specific, specific, specifically the Limerick half forward line were all on fire yesterday and they were very hard played at the top of their game. But um, yeah, that probably was one area maybe they could look back on with, with, with a small bit of uh, regret um, that they did, probably didn't win that battle a bit more than, than, they, than they could have. That was always the... Uh, I guess the, the realisation was that after Groot Hegarty had one of his most off days in the semi-final that he would just roar into things in the final and that's exactly what happened yesterday and that entire half-forward line killed Kilkenny. So what was Kilkenny's plan to try and nullify Groot Hegarty and, and why didn't it work as much? The obvious answer to that is that Groot Hegarty is pretty good at hurling. Yeah, no, look, he was... You could see he was playing to see for everyone yesterday. He was the top of his game. You know, everything was just falling for him yesterday. You know, the runs he was making, he was just getting on into the ball. You know, I turned to the brother there at one stage, yes, I said the ball is just following him around the pitch. Um, but that doesn't come by accident to the likes of him. You know, he's that takes a lot of hard work and a lot of effort, you know. But um, yeah, look, starting off, it looked like to me, I had a good view from it in, in, in the stand that they were um they were trying to hold their line in the half back line a bit for, for um, you know, especially on set plays and puck outs. And they were just limited were getting way too much space. And then when this when they would go man for man. They were just even, you know, they were still getting away from the Kenny lads and, you know, they weren't necessarily man-marking um, their half-forward line as such until they had Paddy Deegan eventually to follow Groot Hegarty. But again, he was just in such uh, top-class form, you know, he was absolutely outstanding. And, you know, you'd feel sorry for Paddy, Paddy Deegan too in a way that, you know, you could see he was just giving it everything he had. And that's the kind of player he is, you know, he was all heart, all determination, you know, trying to fight back at every opportunity he could. You know, he he clipped over one or two pints himself, but Rod Hegarty responded then again. And, you know, they just had a great battle, you know, but unfortunately for Paddy Deegan and the rest of the Kenny halfbacks, Rod Hegarty was just in a different planet yesterday. You were pretty much right in line, I think, with Rod Hegarty's goal. Uh, how difficult a finish was that? Oh, it was unbelievable. First, we, we thought first that maybe one, Owen Murphy could have... Um, you know, maybe maybe saved it, but then we watched the replays and we just thought oh, there was no hope. There was just an unbelievable finish. Um, you know, even his touch in the rock to bring the ball up, you know, people might have seen that because it happened so quick, but he just flicked it, decided to hurley up into his hand, going at full speed, you know, and, you know, people say then there was three or four or five Kenny lads around him. How did he get away and how did he get the shot off? But he was so strong and he's so big and, you know, his stride is so deceiving, like, you know, so... um. You know, and the strike then again, it was just an unbelievable goal. And, you know, as he said in his interview getting out of the match last night, you know, it kind of set him up for the day and by God did it. Is it possible to nullify that entire Limerick forward unit? Because it seemed like Kilkenny did a pretty good job on that Limerick full forward line. But to do a good job on the full forward line, do you then leave the half forward line free? Is it essentially you have to pick one or the other and just hope that one of those lines doesn't destroy you if they're left that little bit freer? Yeah, it's very difficult. Like, I suppose you, you go back to the Munster final, Claire went a lot man for man and just everyone tries to beat their own man and hopefully everyone else will do the same job. And like, as you said there, like the Kenny full back in yesterday, I thought were outstanding. You know, the, obviously Aaron Galan, I think, got three from play. Shane Stanley got two from play. But like, as a whole, the full back line, were, I thought, were, were brilliant throughout, even when they came on the cost there as well at different stages. But again, the half hour and then we're given so much like this amount of space. I don't think I watched it back to the telly last night. I don't think watching it in telly gives us, you know, people won't understand how much room and space was around the Limerick half hour line midfield area for them to run into. And that's the danger when you're going man for man. 
you know, the thing does open up very easily. And when you have such good team and players like Limerick and are so well coached in their runs, in their movements, it's very hard, it's very difficult for to defend. Um, and it just it, it takes a lot out of the team. Say, for instance, it was Kilkenny yesterday to do that. And uh, I said, Limerick, oh, you need a couple of yards. And, yeah, and yesterday they got too many of them around that middle third. And, you know, they punished them. Uh, 113 from the half forward line is outstanding. And they've been doing that for the last number of years. And, you know, that's that's their, their half back line, their half forward line are the two lines that drive that team on. And they, were t- they, they drove them on again yesterday. And like I mean, having Dimmer Burns in that half back line is is it something of a of a cheat code? And that one from his his own twenty one was in the first half is absolutely extraordinary. Just like something you said in the, in your first answer there, Paddy was just about Kilkenny maybe not getting ball in their half forward line. It, it did feel that their strategy was to get the ball down on TJ Reid early and often, and you can't really fault that tactic because TJ Reid uh, is amazing. So was there a bit more nuance that they were maybe missing at times in that second half, maybe in the first half as well, but especially in that second half when a couple of the wides were starting to clock up for them. Yeah, you know, like you could see they were struggling and the puck out in the first half to Kenny. They were kind of a bit divided of options in in that when they went short, they ended up kind of, if they didn't work it into trouble, you know, I know Mikey Butler got caught with one, he hit a ball into trouble in the middle of the field from a short puck out, but they were going along and they only had the one man really to aim for, which was TJ. And in fairness, I know he didn't score from play yesterday, but he was absolutely unbelievable, you know. He was either catching the puck out or he was knocking it down to the Kenny man or if he didn't win it, he was keeping it there, which which what you want a forward to do, not letting the, the Limerick guys come out with the ball. He was just unbelievable. But unfortunately for Kilkenny, he he looked like their only ball winner from the long ball until Walter came in. And then Walter had a great first 15, 20 minutes in the second half and he was causing a hassle for Limerick and, and, and the long puck out. Um, but yeah, it just looked like you could see how Limerick were so well coached on their puck out and Kilkenny didn't have as many ideas or options on theirs. But it also seemed as if Limerick had war games, the scenario of Walter coming on or for them to go uh, route one on top of TJ and maybe TJ and Walter where by they just had those bodies back and they were constantly circling behind TJ that if he got the ball and turned, there were still going to be two Limerick men between him and the goals. They were not going to give up any goal opportunities to Kilkenny at all. And it, and it is credit to Kilkenny that they managed to eke one out early in the second half. Yeah, you know, that was sheer determination and doggedness, as they call it, that, you know, even when TJ did get the ball, he caught the puck out for one of the goals. He still had a lot of work to do. He had to get around yeah. Sean Finn. There was another Limerick defender, two Limerick defenders there. He lost his hurley. You know, they, they earned everything, like, you know, and as you said there, they done so well to get the two goals they did. And I think TJ had another chance. He could have hit it over the bar to either bring it back a point or level the game. And he actually took it on again. And he, he went into a lot of Limerick bodies and I think it was overturned. But yeah, you know, but that's just the man he is. Like he was he was he was thinking goals and he was so close, he was probably saying this is a great opportunity. But again, Limerick just had the bodies back and that's the way they play. They, they cover that goal mount so so quickly and uh they're very good around that area and supporting each other. But yeah, look, tis again when you're when you only have that one or two players, you know, like Grohl Hegarty, you Limerick could put the ball down Grohl Hegarty, they could put it down on, on, on Tom Morrissey, Kyle Hayes, yes, they must have won three fielded three puck outs as well. Aaron Galland fielded another long ball in. There's so many options they can play it in. Whether it's I suppose Kilkenny yesterday struggles um to get a bit of a foothold in that kind of, in that in them scenarios in the game. Um specifically until uh, Walter came on. Um, you could see that he could be given another option there and give, give Limerick something more to worry about. I think we've all used that word doggedness this morning around Kilkenny. Like, it's incredible that there was only two points between them at the end of the game because everything seemed to come that little bit easier for Limerick throughout. Their skill level seemed that little bit higher. And then it was even a surprise looking at the stats that they had a similar amount of wides because it felt as though Kilkenny had a lot of bad wides, whereas uh, Limerick were scoring at will. Uh, how did Limerick not win this game by an awful lot more? Yeah, you know, and I, I said the same man at half time. I couldn't believe they were only four pints down. Like you had to be going in saying, if I was in the Kilkenny dressing room saying, "Geez, let's we we're in this now. Like we're forty four down. We haven't. We're not getting a chance to get going here." Limerick are, are moving well, um, but like it must have been, like I suppose it just shows the heart in them Kilkenny lads and they're from, coming from their manager Brian Cody that, you know, every time they got a score yesterday in the first half even a lot of the second half, you know, they had to put so much effort into getting the scores. The next thing, Limerick could puck out the ball and they come back straight away within 20, 30 seconds and have a pint come out back over the bar to Farrand. 
like they answered him a lot yesterday, like you know, Limerick did at like Kenny brought, and it just came a bit more effortless to Limerick. Um, Kenny had to earn all their scores, I felt way more. And like to say that TJ had no pine from play, right? Fair enough, but like the amount of work he had he done for other players and laying off scores and the punishment he took for his teammates to get into space, like you know, and that's the way it was. And unlike Limerick. They were able to make their runs into space, the runs off the ball, and the ball was, was being laid on from either it was from Nicky Quaid from a puck out or whether the ball's been played into him into space, you know. So um, but yeah, in fairness to Kenny, they showed unbelievable heart, you know, and people say, Oh, well, they ha- you should have that in a game of hurling, you should have that in an all-iron final. But they consistently bring it, like, you know, and all their players, no matter they come off the sideline, they got great contribution off the sideline as well yesterday, the subs that came in. They all just showed unbelievable heart determination and they stuck in there. And like uh Brian Cody had, or Owen Cody had two wides in the second half. I think Adrian Mullen had two wides, which you really did a wide. You know, if you get if you if you got half of them, like, mm. you know, they could have been right in touch there at the end and you wouldn't know what might have happened. Yeah, what do you think? Would I, like it, it does feel maybe with the evidence of the Galway game at hand as well. It does feel that the later in a game you go, Limerick do have the edge because of the substitutions you mentioned there. So maybe if it does go the the, the distance, maybe in a, in a replay or something like that, you'd, you'd still probably back Limerick, would you? Yeah, now Limerick were getting, you know, Limerick were, I suppose they were hurling very well. It was a very hot day. Like we were just saying, like Grod Hegarty was was absolutely unbelievable, and we're saying anyone they have to make a change and. Either they make a change or else he'll run out of steam. He can't keep going the way he was going. And in fairness, Dave Blanchfield, when he came in for Kilkenny, he actually looked a bit more suitable to Mark Hegarty. But um, at the same time, then, you know, David Reedy came on. He was unlucky for uh, a pint. You know, I think Hawkeye denied him a pint. Conor O'Neill came on, got an unbelievable score. Conor Wilding came on, got another unbelievable score. So again, like the bench is just coming on again and making a difference. Like I don't think Peter Casey scored and he came on. Um, you know, so like Limerick just had the players like and say that they do it all without Keen Lynch then like imagine he was running to the scenario there yesterday for the last twenty minutes if he was fit, like, you know, nightmare stuff for Kilkenny like, but it's just they're blessed to have the players they have at the moment. And you know, as I, I I'm working down Limerick, I met a I met a Limerick man a few weeks ago that's connected to the team and he said we just have that special group of players at at the moment and we have to make the most of it, he said to me, and he's right. Yeah, no, that's it's hard to argue against that, and also kind of how terrifying they seem next year with someone like Carl O'Neill being a year older, Keen Lynch being back to full fitness, hopefully at the, the start of next season. So it does kind of beg the question again this year about how do you stop Limerick? Did we see in the semi final and the final the two teams that are best equipped to potentially stop Limerick? Yeah, maybe so. Um, you maybe seen a possible, you know, maybe given a template, maybe of how to try and disrupt them anyway, um, maybe take the, the clear game once the final as well. Um, but that takes unbelievable energy, you know, teamwork, communication, all are, need to be 100% for the opposition team to even give them an opportunity to beat Limerick. And like, you know, as you said there, how do you even, you know, who's going to stop them next year? Like, fair enough, Galway put it up to him semi-final. Kilkenny gave him a great battle yesterday. But Limerick were still probably the better team on both them days, and they came over hard most of the final as well. So they're getting everything thrown at them, you know, and they the answers to everything. And you know, they're not going to have at the moment. And if they come to all come, come through the club games, they're going to have a full squad to pick from. As you said, their Cotton is getting old or more experienced. Connor Boylan, um, a full fully fit King Lynch, and a fully fit and probably hungry, savage King Lynch for next year after what what he missed out on this year. So. Like it's very daunting for every other or other team going to next year that these lads and like they're going to be thinking down the line like Kenny done four in a row they're going to be thinking greatness and they are a great team but they they're going to break want to break all the records while they can they their their average age is is working with them within the squad you know so none of them lads are going to be going anywhere for a while so um very daunting for every other team and you know for to try and come up with ideas and ways of beating them look some teams maybe give you know. A ways and, and maybe a plan of beating them this year, but it hasn't it hasn't worked. So there, there has to be another way. Um, but people aren't able, to, teams aren't able to find it out at the moment. I think it'll be a shock if if Liam Cahill isn't appointed Tipperary manager over the next few weeks. Is a Tipperary with Liam Cahill in tow a possible problem for Limerick next year? Oh God, it's hard to know. And like, yeah, yeah, there's strong strong talks down here that he's going to be 
matinee manager soon enough. And uh, look, if he does, you know, he, he would have had a lot of them tip lads under his wing at minor under 20 and under 21 as well. And had was successful with them all. But, you know, senior inter-county is a lot different, you know. And, you know, players obviously, you know, they progress and, you know, they either come on or they don't. It doesn't suit them, you know. And it'll be interesting to see. But I still think tip are doing a lot are in the, in, in the stage of a lot of development at the moment. So... I won't be getting too carried away that they're going to be worrying Limerick next year as of yet. Like as you, from watching yesterday, you know they're a good bit behind at the moment. But look, hopefully we can get the our house in order in the background in tip, and then we can see where it takes it takes us. But um, yeah, I think a lot of teams, a lot of teams have a, a lot of um, catching up to do to, to catch Limerick at the moment. Uh, the opinion is divided on how it was handled over the weekend. Like. Uh, the Colin Bonner a lot of people felt maybe hadn't made the impact people wanted but uh, a lot of people not feeling it wasn't quite right the language that was used around his departure uh, relieved of his duties isn't really a, a GEA term what have you made of how it's gone over the last couple of weeks yeah you know look I suppose look, when you're in the county you you hear all these different things and I've heard more stories about different what was going on and that you have to be laughing at half them, but, um, but yeah look Look, if 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 the, if the Tip County Board or whoever was involved or the players or look, if the thing wasn't meeting the standards or wasn't up to scratch or, you know, not what was needed, well then obviously you can't stay going for another year or two and everyone being unhappy, like because you're not going to make progress and it's not going to it's not going to work basically. And fair enough, if change had to be made, they had to be made, and now is the time to make them. You can't be waiting around, but like obviously it could have been, you know, dealt with a bit better, you know, um, the wording of the statement, obviously, and things like that. That could have been probably sorted a bit more, you know, suitable to everyone in the background, and that's stuff that we're obviously not privy to. But, but yeah, look, it's 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 hard, especially when it's one of your own county men. You know, Colin is 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 a tip man, you know, true and true was a great player for Tipperary, you know, and when it doesn't work out, people are obviously going to be disappointed. But look, we just wanted what. The, we all want what's the best for Tipperary in the county, and you know if people aren't happy, if 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 the if, if, if standards, well, decisions have to be made, unfortunately. But again, I would have to agree with you that it probably could have been dealt with a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit easier and and, and even quieter than the way it was. Uh, it's going to be a, a long winter, party, and we're going to have to spend a lot of time chatting about this Limerick side and their greatness, and we'll no doubt get into Limerick, Kilkenny. Which of them is greater? Which fifteen would you split up? Uh, you obviously played both of them, uh, the great Kilkenny side, and you played against this great Limerick side. Uh, which would which would the Tipperary team of twenty ten take down easier? Jeez, I don't know. It's hard. It's actually it's a hard. I'm not trying to dodge it around. It's a hard answer because they're both different teams. Like you know, you see yesterday the way. Limerick go about their business, fair enough, they're physical, like the, the Kilkenny team, they're physical, they're hard working, but they're like, and the point I'm trying to get across is, I think they're so well coached, Limerick, like, I know the lads were raving about Paul Canuck last night in the Sunday game, but like, you can just see them, the way they play, they have so different avenues and options that they, they can turn to, even if you do get on top of them, you know, they're able to make decisions on the pitch, or you, as they're able to make decisions quickly in the pitch, or they're getting the messages in off the sideline to the pitch quicker than any other team. But they seem to be able to adapt to any scenario you throw at them, you know. So I think they're so well coached, and that comes from so much hard work that the, man, that the management they have put into them. Like, whether it's, I think, the Kenny team before, obviously they, they had their, their way of playing that, but they were made way more kind of man to man, you know, in their positions. I'm good enough to beat you in your position. And that's the way it was. Whereas I think Limerick now, they make you think a lot more. They bring you to a lot of different areas of the pitch, you know, and you have to probably think away your way through games more. So, look, it's very difficult to pick which team is better. I think individually still, individually, I think the Kenny team back in the 0-9-10 are probably individually better players. But maybe Limerick, the Limerick team now as a team and the way they play and the connections they have, and um, possibly could be a better team. Right. Yeah, well, we'll be having this conversation probably again and again and again over the, the next little while. Uh, Park, great stuff this morning. Thanks, Millie, for being with us. Cheers, lads. Thanks. Cheers.